Hello everybody, welcome back to Sin City Living. Jason here bringing you today's video. As always guys, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and don't forget to email us. Please send me some strategies, some questions, something you would like to see. Haven't gotten too many of them lately, so I you know, haven't filmed as many videos. Um, you know, I prefer to film what you guys want to see. And uh, so today is one I kind of, you know, to sort of made up from watching uh, when I was dealing the other day. I want to talk about something I've talked about in the past, kind of dispelling the myth, sort of. I want to talk about the Iron Cross. I want to talk about, talk about the Iron Cross and why it is not this great strategy that so many people out there on the internet like to say it is. So let's look at the Iron Cross. Now, I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to keep this simple. We'll say a $10 table. I, I, should do this on like a quarter table. We'll say a $10 table. All the examples pretty much remain the same either way. So if you're on a $10 table, then a, a true proper iron cross, you'd be looking at $10 on the field. Then you'd be looking at 18 on the six, 18 on the eight, and 15 on the five. You always have to be higher units on your place bets. Otherwise it's an improper iron cross and it gets even worse, even worse than, than the normal iron cross. So. Why is this not such a great strategy? The first reason is one that applies to a lot of strategies out there, a whole, whole bunch of strategies out there. So it is not inclusive just to the Iron Cross. It's the fact that the classic Iron Cross does not press. It does not press, so that's just, it just it makes it weak. It, it truly, truly, truly does. But that's, again, makes a lot of strategies weak. And I'm gonna show you why in a second. Now. The other, another reason why the Iron Cross is not so great kind of combines with the fact that you're not pressing, okay? So, a seven comes one in six times. One in six odds of a seven. That means that most, the average length of rolls is something like 2.78 or something like that. Average number of rolls per shooter. It's not a lot. We'll say three, okay? We'll say three is the average number of rolls. That means that six, six rolls of the dice without a seven would be awesome, would be great. It, it, would, it defies the statistics. Um, so it's already, it's an exceptional roll when you hit six rolls without a seven, okay? Keep that in mind. Six rolls out of seven is an exceptional roll. It's an above average roll. It's a significantly above average roll. Four rolls without a seven is above average roll. Five rolls without a seven is an above average roll. Six rolls of that is a seven is a significantly above average roll. All right, does not mean that we don't have 20, 30 minute rolls with you know 15 to 25 rolls of the dice out of seven. They do happen, abso freaking loot. It's the whole point behind playing, which is why you press. So let's look at it. Six rolls without a seven is an exceptional roll, right? So right here, we have $51 here plus that 10 there. So we have $61 at risk, okay? Not counting the two or ten, two or twelve that pay double or triple. Anytime the field rolls, you're going to win ten dollars. Okay. Anytime one of these numbers roll, you're going to win eleven dollars because these are going to pay twenty-one bucks, and that's going to pay, that's going to lose ten. Right. So eleven dollars. Eleven dollars if these roll. Ten dollars if other numbers roll. Right. That means that let's kind of average it out. Let's say three of these and then three not of these. Right. That's sixty-three dollars. Sixty-three dollars after six rolls of the dice. So it requires an above average roll, a significantly above average, average roll, just to make up, if that seventh roll is a seventh, then you've lost $61 and you made 63. So you made two bucks. It takes a significantly above average roll to make back, just to break even. Now that by itself does not make this strategy weak because most strategies are not gonna break even with, uh, um, without a, significantly above average roll, okay? But here's the thing. What you're really looking for is you're looking for that above average roll that one number hits far more times than statistically likely. Let's say you, let's say you have a 15 minute roll, but the six just happens to roll, well, let's say the point's eight. The six just happens to roll, say, six times. Six times in this 15 minute roll, right? Six times in this 15 minute roll, that means that you made 66, that the Iron Cross player would have made 66 bucks off that. And let's say another 90 from, you know, let's say they had uh, 15 rolls of the dice. It's pretty, pretty strong. It's about a 15, 20 minute roll. So 
They've got that 90 plus the 66. It's 156 bucks, right? 156 bucks that they made. Then the seven out comes. They've lost $61. 156. That means they made what? $95. They made $95 in profit. Okay. 95 bucks in profit. Now, let's think about somebody else. Instead of $61 at risk, let's say they have $64 at risk, okay? 64 bucks at risk. Because they went across. They're not doing the field. They just went across. Now, let's say we have that 15 rolls of the dice without a seven. Um, we'll even say, just for the hell of it, that two of those rolls happen to fall on the twos and twelves, which highly unlikely, but we'll say it happens. So they have 13 rolls of the dice. 13 rolls of the dice that hit something that paid them. Now, we already said six of them are going to be on the sixes, all right? So outside of that, we're looking at seven other numbers. We could spread those around, but actually, let's just look at the six. So we've got a player that bet $3 more at risk than the Iron Cross player. And let's say they caught this 15-minute roll with six or 15 rolls of the dice, and the six happened to roll six times, right? Six times. Now, this is why you want to press. So we got a mid press, okay? So first time it hits. Second time it hit, whoop. Second time it hits. Third time it hits, and this is just a mid presser going nice and easy. Third time it hits. Fourth time it hits. Fifth time it hits. Now, a couple different ways they can go. Let's say they just go 72. Fifth time it hits. And then the sixth time it hits. Now they'll say, let's say they'll go to nine. Okay? So that six has only rolled six times. That six has rolled six times. And the player has just off the six, the player has $195 in profit just off that six. Now we said that some of these other numbers, that we had seven other rolls of the dice that landed on these other numbers. Okay, there's five other numbers. Let's say two, let's say one, two, two, one, that's two, four, five, six. Sure, let's say one, two, two, one, and then we'll say an eight, okay? So that four, the first time that four hit, they're gonna get paid $18. They're probably gonna press it up a quarter, so they're not gonna make that much. Same thing with the 10, they're not gonna, they're probably gonna press it up to a quarter, so they're not gonna make a whole heck of a lot. Now, let's say two hits on five. The first time, they go that way. Then the second time, they're going to go to a quarter. Same thing over here. 15. Second time, to a quarter. Now we've got one hit on the 8, so... And then the 8 will come unmarked. Same number of hits. Now we take out that $64 in loss if the seven comes on the, on the 16th roll. So they lost $64. That means that this player would have made a profit of $188. This player made a profit of 95 as we discussed with a truly exceptional roll. Got to press, folks. Got to press. There's variants to the Iron Cross that you can use to expand out, press yourselves up, that can actually get more profitable and be a much better strategy. So I hope you guys find this interesting, illuminating, enlightening, or at least just plain fun. Catch you guys next time. Bye now.